<laughs> this podcast has been in the works for so long and we're so excited to actually begin, commence. So Tara, why don't you tell us about what Sisterhood Society is? Well, what you can expect on this podcast is that we're going to just talk about a little bit of everything. Life, kids, food, fashion, all the things in between. Um, and so we want to just kind of take you along for the ins and outs of our lives. So uh, a little intro to us. Um, I'm Tara. I'm the oldest. You may know us as the three sisters from Royal and Reese. Um, we started it seven years ago and have been in business. Um, and I'm the one that came up with the idea and <laughs> of the podcast and the business. So we owe Tara our lives. <laughs> um, but I, uh, Wit and I are six years apart and Kate and I are nine. Um, we all live together our, well, while they were going to college. Um, and that was really kind of what started the formation of our close friendship because there was such a gap between ages. Um, and it was kind of from that point on that we've really done life together. Um, and so Whit and I got married the same year. Um, we had babies six days apart. Uh, we live across the street from one another. So we've really kind of just come alongside each other in the midst of that. And Kate comes and does life with us one week a month. <laughs> I do it every day. It would just physically, physically, in physically in person. Um, but I've been married for 11, almost 11 years to Brian and we have four kids. We have four living kids. We have five kids total. Um, and so we have Brecken who's seven, Briley who's five, um, Britton who is four, and then Briar is our baby in heaven. And then Briggs is our little caboose. Um, and he is 18 months. And, um, yeah, before we did this, we worked in automotive and, um, this was a big change. <laughs> real big like going switch. from cars at the auto industry to clothing so went to school for business and ended up in retail so there you go um i'm wit i am the middle sister and i encompass pretty much everything that that entails being quiet and not wanting to put myself out there on a podcast <laughs> Because I know she's I'll, like, you guys are gonna have to carry the conversation, and we're like, that's not a problem. Because <laughs> I know I'll say something awkward. So, um, I have three kids. I have been married the same amount of time as Tara. I've been with my husband Isaac for seventeen years, though. Yes, you've been with each other a lot longer. A long very time. long time, almost as long. So as we found out on the last episode that you that him and I met eleven years ago. Yeah, <laughs> not on the wedding. Day. <laughs> no, that was um. See, that's why I don't do podcasts well, because I speak <laughs> weird things that are abstract. I are speak accurate. weird things. <laughs> oh my gosh. But um, I went to school for painting, um, which has not done anything for me in life. And instead, I have learned on YouTube how to be a graphic designer, photo editing, um, pretty much anything you want to know, I learned on YouTube. But in your defense, you went into painting because you were going to get your master's in, um, in uh, art therapy. Yes. So, there was so I had a minor in psychology, um, but I didn't end up doing that because I would have had to go get a doctorate and I didn't feel like doing that. <laughs> and mom and dad also said they were like, they were like yeah. wait, be a graphic designer. And she's like, nah, dog, I'm going to be a painter. Like, yeah, so instead, we're cutting you off at a bachelor's. And you were like, oh, okay, degree in painting. Instead, <laughs> I stopped with a painting degree, which tell me, tell me what job you can get with a painting degree. Um, but anyway, you live in Laguna Beach, you could have had a little probably a starving artist. <laughs> But anyways, here we are. So that degree actually helped me out because I am artistically minded. So I do, I do help with graphic design, photo editing, um, garment design, pretty much anything that we need done, I can figure it out. Um, so yeah, that's me. Lovely. Um, I'm Kate. I live in Nashville. So that's why the girls are not here all the time. So some of our podcast episodes will actually be remote where it'll be like a split screen which would be super fun. Um, I don't have any kids. I don't have any pets. And <laughs> most of the time, <laughs> I have nothing going on in my life. I'm just kidding. Um, I have a husband. His name is Phil. He's a professional drummer. And so he's on the road a lot of the time. Um, and who does he play for? He plays for Kelsey Ballerini. And right now they're off tour. So he's been like filling in with some friends and doing, he does studio work. And we built a house last year so he could, um, I primarily so they could have a drum studio our house which is super fun um and my hobbies include 
reading, <laughs> <laughs> eating snacks, reading. Um, okay, so we wanted to kind of explain like the reasoning why we wanted to do a podcast first really quickly. And then this episode is going to be an unconventional way of how to get to know us because we think getting to know people is sort of boring. <laughs> the normal like, what's your name? What we just did, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's so stale. stale. <laughs> it's so boring. So <laughs> tip, tip, minute 10. I'm just teasing. So that was just like a five minute general info about who we are, what we do. But like Tara said, you probably know us from Royal and Reese. It's a business we've had for seven years. We are a women and kids clothing boutique. We started as a children's online store and segmented into women's. And now um, we are kind of wanting to incorporate the community that was created through a business in a different way that we can connect with you guys um, in this new forum, essentially. And so we wanted to um, create the Sisterhood Society that's going to be a place that we talk, like Tara said, all things under the sun, but it's always going to have like a structure. And at the end of every episode, it is going to involve our, our, social, our Sisterhood Society. Sorry, I was going to say community and it came out all jumbled. <laughs> Um, so the reason we wanted to create the podcast is we used to have these live streams on Facebook. Yeah. And we would be live all hours of the day, you know, constantly trying out clothes, chatting with you guys. And it was kind of like QVC for an online store, like a boutique, but we obviously have less staffing now post COVID and we wanted to have it be more intentional with just the sisters and not just like, um, you know, one sister here and randomly. And so this is a way for you guys to connect with us outside of the business, which I think is going to be fun. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So this episode is actually brought to you by Royal and Reese. Let me tell you a little about them, guys. <laughs> um, so this episode is brought to you by Royal and Reese. It, Royal and Reese is known for being a family run business who prioritizes clothes for all shapes and sizes and wants to dress you for the life you actually live. So our motto is dressing you for your everyday, whether that's like carpool, um, running errands, kids, all the things. And if you use the code podcast 10, you'll get 10% off your first order with that code. Yes. So the first order of business that we like to do on the podcast is we like to talk about what's good in the sisterhood. (laughs) <laughs> which is just our way of being able to say what's been going on in our lives and like what's been happening. And it's supposed to be good, but Kate took it in the negative um, on the last episode. <laughs> so <laughs> be sure to make sure you keep it positive. Yeah, let me think of something good that's happening right now. Maybe so, you should go first. <laughs> no, I got one for you. Oh, because Kate has had like literally since the beginning of the year, all your plans have gotten canceled. That's but true. Last weekend. So you guys, it's that. been a treacherous few weeks. <laughs> I literally just told, like, I called the girls one day and I was like, I'm putting up a foreclosure sign in my window of my life because literally, like, I had, like, six trips and, like, plans and all these things that kept getting canceled either from the you-know-what or um, <laughs> or for weather. Yeah, don't say it. We don't want to have Yeah, we don't want to get flagged. <laughs> so, long story short, my husband's a drummer and a good friend of ours um, who is an artist named Russell Dickerson was wanting uh, or asked Phil to fill in for a couple weeks for their drummer who was out. And so there was a bunch of shows that kept getting canceled for weather. So I was supposed to go to St. Louis, it got canceled. Then I was supposed to go to Kentucky and it got canceled. And they finally rescheduled it for this past weekend. And I got to go. So my first thing of 10 things that didn't get canceled this <laughs> month, and it was really fun. Your first event of 2020. My first real event off the couch of 2022 and it was really lovely and I got no sleep and it was great (laughs) so what's good for you well last year I really dove into my health journey um but at the expense of my thyroid (laughs) I noticed that my hair started falling out and I had issues with my thyroid health and ended up gaining a lot of my weight back turns out you can't just eat peanut butter for lunch (laughs) turns out (laughs) Well, and I wasn't trying to do this, but I, I realized I wasn't eating enough. Well, I, I knew that I wasn't eating like tons, but I wasn't eating enough. So my body was just kind of going into a uh, breakdown. So anyways, I started doing um, like a program where I'm eating like five meals a day, nutritious meals, and I'm noticing it's starting to turn around, which is really exciting for me because if you have thyroid issues, you know that it's not not a fun, not a fun time. 
So anyways, my thyroid's doing better. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Um, we didn't really have a lot going on. I got to see my new niece. We stopped over. Yes. Um, Brian has a twin and his uh, brother, his wife had a baby. So we stopped over and saw them. Um, and we had, who's so Brian? <laughs> <laughs> I already saw who he was. Did you? Yeah. In the beginning? Okay, yeah. sorry. She and also saw all of her kids and their ages. You're right. I did. Brian's so, her husband. Brian is her husband. I think it's my husband. Did Phil you say that you had kids? In your intro? Oh, I do have three children. <laughs> I was trying to remember. You did, but you didn't say their names. I should probably say their names because we'll probably be referencing them and you guys will have no idea what we're saying. So Rivers is my son. He's seven. Indy is my five-year-old or will be five this next week. And then Ever is two. She's But maybe you should name them off by their nicknames because that's what you Call them my, of their names. my husband has given them really weird nicknames. That should be an episode in of itself. <laughs> um, so Rivers, we call him <laughs> Isaac calls him. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm so nervous. He calls him Roybin. Uh I don't know why. Ribbon. Rivers Roybin. He used to call him Ribbon. Yeah, we call like him Ribbon. Ribbon. Like <laughs> Andy is Andy Wendy, which actually Ever Indian Indian Winden. Indian Winden or Indy Windy. And then Ever, we call her Chi Chi. <laughs> uh, so we may reference those people too. You guys should be taking notes. <laughs> They're like, wow, I didn't know I needed to learn so much about them. Oh my gosh. So, th were you done with, <laughs> are you done with your, what's good? Uh, we didn't have anything else. We okay. had some friends over for Super Bowl. That was about the extent of it. I made too much food and now we're still eating it for yes. later. Okay, so we thought it's super boring to get to know you, you know, with the typical get to know you questions and since this is a brand new podcast, or maybe you followed us for seven years and you're already like, I know everything about you. Well, just buckle up, guys. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> okay, so I'll start. No, I want to start. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> okay, Tara's going to ask us three odd questions that like you wouldn't normally. I think we should round robin. Like yeah. I'll ask one because I, I we shouldn't be all my questions. We should like oh, okay. rabbit. I'll okay. ask one and then you guys can ask me and Kate. You can ask. Yes. Them. Okay. You get. Yeah, it. we get it. Yeah. We, you got the four one. I'm one. down. I'm down. <laughs> Let's go for it. Okay. If you were a dog, what would you be? <laughs> what? What an excellent or question what to start. Kind of dog do you feel like you resemble? You know what I. Or in body, just tip, in body. Of, tip of mind, top of mind, chihuahua. No, I'm not that <laughs> oh petite. So me. <laughs> First of all, rude. Except for I'm very happy you think I'm petite. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just like a teeny little chihuahua. <laughs> um, I think that Dalmatians are like really exotic, and you like don't see them very often. You know, mm -hmm. so like <laughs> you see one, you're like, oh my gosh, a Dalmatian. <laughs> That's how people feel when they meet me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's okay. my answer. Okay, so my answer would be a Shih Tzu. <laughs> that is because you're a little shit. <laughs> that well, yes, actually, that was my nickname growing up. Because you like to sleep. I'm just. Teasing. I like to sleep, and they're kind. They're kind of. They're not the smartest dogs, but they're. They're really? everybody loves them, <laughs> and they have like beautiful long lashes. They have snatched noses too. Uh -huh. Sometimes they have underbites. Yes. That's, <laughs> it's me in a nutshell, guys. Okay, what's your question for me, Tara? Okay. So um, Are you as good as mine. Maybe. <laughs> so what is the sexiest and least sexiest name like of a person? Wait. Like what's a really sexy name and least sexy name? How does this get to know me? What I would like to be? What? Wait, what? like, are you talking about like a term of endearment or someone's like physical first name? Physical first name? I thought these were just random questions. <laughs> it's not <laughs> get to know you. Okay, I'll go with it. Okay, so listen, um, Yvonne is a, oh, so that's sexy. a very sexy name. Least sexy, uh, Bertha. Yeah. What What about boy? a boy name? Oh, cool. Um, Xander oh, just yeah. comes to mind yeah. right away. <laughs> know a single Xander <laughs> I know you know. Uh, and it kind of sounds like dandruff um oh I thought you said they're a sexy name no it, it is um <laughs> Xander <laughs> and dandruff are <laughs> I don't know 
Go ahead, Tara. I can't. <laughs> Not sexy. Um, I feel like a woman's name that's sexy. I always think Victoria sounds sexy. Mm -hmm. um, a not sexy name is, I would say, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sorry to all the Maggies out there listening. <laughs> um, it's not personal. A boy name that's sexy. Um... <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be so much background noises that they're going to have um, to like, try to crop out. You're going to grow with us in this podcast. <laughs> it will not be perfect. I'll just do a bit of there. Um, I was thinking, I always think that Channing Tatum is sexy, so I feel like that's Channing. Channing. That's mm -hmm. like, yeah. I feel but like, I feel like it almost has to go with Tatum to get the full effect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is not gonna... a sexy name. Sorry. Oh, yeah. I have moved on. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What would you like to say in that? Not sexy boy name. I'm sorry. I'll just let you finish. I know. Oh, I'm now I'm curious. I want to know what her non sexy um, boy name is. Evan. I like Evan's not a sexy boy name. Okay. Do you know what a non-sexy boy name is? Roy. Yeah, Roy. Roy. I feel like like the baby boomer generation have a lot of non-sexy names. You know what I was thinking about the other day? Me and Phil were talking about baby names, and I was thinking about how I loved grandma's sister's name, Elsie. And I was like, she was so horrified. She was like, no, like don't go with old names. Like do something like like if I was ever like our grandma's name was Tilly. And I was like, what if I named her after you? And she was like, no please don't name it your baby Tilly and I was thinking about it would be like if our kids came to us and they're like mom I'm gonna name my baby Linda <laughs> <laughs> and Phil was like that's so accurate that's really literally is. probably what your grandma felt like because she's like ew Elsie and we would be like Linda like no come on like we would be so horrified if Brecken came up to us and be like you guys were really loving the name Linda <laughs> It's true though, because it was like the older generation of our generation. But don't you names. feel like by the time our kids have kids, they'll be naming weird things like stop and go, <laughs> stop and go. There's a twin. Their name stop and go. We weren't door and window. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my first question is: We're gonna get a little saucy, so I need you to open your phones. Okay. The third last person you texted, and what did it say? The third last person? <laughs> Not the first or second last person, but the third person that you texted. Third last? I mean, this Whitney's is Whitney's order team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is also order team. It's like our, it's, okay, don't go off work text. They were shipping like, them today. <laughs> <laughs> the third last test, text was to Brit, our okay. cousin Brit, and I said, thanks for letting me know. Okay, that's so this boring. so saucy. That is filling um, the, the next right one that is like to a person is to Brian. And I said, what can I tell Chelsea and Carrie? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what we're talking about to Chelsea and Carrie. It is so saucy <laughs> and so salacious. Okay. So my mind that's not work related. Phil, <laughs> I'm finishing my lunch. <laughs> <laughs> that is so scandalous. <laughs> Why did you have to tell him that you were finishing your lunch? Can't, I can't give you context. <laughs> wow. Maybe because after she finished her lunch, she was going to send him a sexy photo. You, know, you never know. <laughs> Yesterday was Valentine's. The most sexy you look is right, right after a meal. <laughs> lunch. So bloated from Bob Evans. That's actually what we had. Listen, you, don't, are in, you know you enjoy those two chicken breasts. <laughs> Just the one breast. Dinner roll. Dinner buns. Dinner buns. I remember Garish. Okay, buns. now back to Tara. Okay. Um, if you're invited to a potluck, what is your go-to item to bring? Oh my gosh, it's always pico de gallo for me. People love my pico except for Whitney. <laughs> she puts a lot of cilantro in it. You either love it or you hate it. Uh, my go-to. And she hates it. So. I always bring a baked good. I always bring a dessert. That's like my, my thing every single time. And it's, it's never the same. It's always different. Interesting. Sometimes I bring a cake. Sometimes I bring a pie. Sometimes I make cupcakes, cookies, like anything sweet is always 
my thing. So my thing is I always bring more than one. Swallow your air bubble. <laughs> <laughs> um, I always, like if someone's hosting, I always feel like they get stuck with like the whole meal, right? So mm -hmm. I feel bad. So then I feel like I need to bring an appetizer and like help with dessert and then like a side item. So I end up bringing like half the meal with me because I feel like <laughs> I should be contributing nice to it because I know how much work it is. It is a lot of work. It's very kind of you. So yes, I always end up over bringing stuff and what I need to. Okay, you're up next. All right, my next one was, what is something, oh no, that one's dumb, let's move on. What part of a kid's movie completely scarred you for life? So like a Disney movie or a, a kid's movie? Oh, I can think of one right away. My girl with the bee sting scene. Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh my gosh, that is such a traumatic, it's so tragic part. I don't know if that's a kid movie though. Is it not? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, characters are kids. PG thirteen. So no, it wasn't a kid. The I feel like wasn't there um wasn't Curly Sue kind of tragic at the end? Doesn't she like leave him or yeah, she has to no. go? No, and, and no, he's in the living room and he says, "I'm in the living room." <laughs> <laughs> he Did leaves you her that you know, one point. No. She thinks he left. Oh, that's what it was. Spoiler alert, but it's literally made in like 88. So if you haven't seen it by now, it's not our fault. Um, <laughs> I think this movie came out like 1982. <laughs> so that's your fault. But basically she, she thinks that if you left something, left a note, that means that they're gone forever. And she's always like, Bill didn't come home today. And she's like, did he, Curly Sue goes, did he leave a note? And she goes, no. And then she goes, he'll be back. And then she gets home from like, remember they thought that she was like gonna go to the orphanage anyways. And then he leaves a note and she goes, what does it say? And she goes, it says I'm in the living room. And then you turn the corner and he's there and they all cry and they become family. I recently watched that when I was quarantining and I cried. I am not joking guys, like sobbed as if I had just like lost a family member <laughs> for 40 minutes afterwards. And finally Phil came up to me and he's like, wow, Curly Sue really got you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I don't know why I'm so emotional. It was like the craziest overreaction to a movie I've ever felt. It was so weird. Anyways, it's fresh in the mind because I just watched it. <laughs> I feel like the Bambi scene where his mom dies is so sad. Side note, how scary was Jafar? He was scary. I know. I don't know why mom and dad left. Jafar was that. scary. Also, um, Mufasa yes. was very scary. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot of Disney movies that almost seem slightly inappropriate or not age appropriate for some of the kids. Yeah, I feel like I wouldn't let Chi Chi watch like yeah. Aladdin. Because there She'd was freak out. Um, Britain. Well, Britain got scared by the Polar Express. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, Tom Hanks in that movie is a little intimidating. Yeah. He's intimidating. And then when they're like screeching across the ice, and then there's like the um hobo that's on top of the train, like all of the she just yeah, freaks her out. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be like a like a wholesome kid. I mean, it is a wholesome movie, but it's just like um I feel like sometimes they're a little scarier than they used to be. Mm -hmm. She also gets freaked out by home alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that I can't blame her. Yeah. Right. Okay, you ready for my next question? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. What is your go-to karaoke song? Um, mine is Jody Messina, and it is it's California Tales. Car no, Carolina. <laughs> Ca -ca Carolina. Ca Carolina. <laughs> um, I'm all right. I was trying to think what the word is. Oh, nice. That's the one I always. I I've never sang karaoke. I think no. that's the only one I felt like I knew all the words to. When I well, the good. Good news is the words are on the screen. <laughs> so that's kind of the point of karaoke, but it's fine. What about you? I literally have never seen karaoke. I, well, oh, I guess you could, that. I guess you could consider worship team karaoke because you're literally reading the reading <laughs> the strange. lyrics. <laughs> so if I had to go based off of that, it would be like oceans. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bold call move. Me out upon the water. <laughs> um, I think mine would be Always Be My Baby by Mariah Carey, and I will hit, hit none of the notes. <laughs> well, she does do whistle notes yeah. in that song, so. Yeah, okay. that's a hard one for Carrie <laughs> Cookie. I think we're on round three, as right? Yes. 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 Okay, if you won the lottery, what would be the first thing you would buy? Like, I would buy, I would renovate my bathroom. 
Oh, actually, no, I would build a new house. <laughs> I was like, wow, how modest of you. <laughs> when the I'm like, wait, just... wait. You're like, I just want to replace the tub. <laughs> My tub, that doesn't work. Oh, so uh, you would build a new house. I would build a new house. Okay. Um, literally such a hot take. I would get breast reduction. <laughs> <laughs> because that's a good one. I would yeah. have a lift. And then I also think I would, I would hire a private chef. I mean, how much are we Jeez. talking here? Yeah, like I would have someone come to my house and cook every day so I just don't have to worry about it because like healthy meals. So then I, if I want to work, then I don't ever have to stress about making lunch. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's true. <laughs> lunch. Do you guys struggle with lunch? Yeah, I really I do. Never, I, have to, I have to meal prep yeah, in, in order to have a good lunch. lunch. I talk about this all the time, but like, what do you guys eat for lunch? Like, I just always feel like I don't know what to eat for lunch. If it's not leftovers, I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> It is kind of a weird, um, like time of day, like food. Yeah. Wise. Like you always know what you're going to eat for breakfast yeah. and you don't necessarily, you know, want to eat a sandwich every day because people are like, make a sandwich. And I'm like, I'm not going to eat a turkey sandwich every day. I mean, that's valid because it's not like you have time to sit down and like cook a dinner, you know, because yeah, right. dinner, dinner time feels like too heavy. Like so, you don't necessarily want like a full plate of vegetables and meat. And so it feels like it should be like, so like what is it? What? You eat for lunch. It's such a mystery. The world's debacle. The more, the more you think about it, the more you're like, I really don't know what But if you lunch. go out to lunch, it doesn't feel like a weird thing. Because someone else right? is making it for you. No, I know. But I just mean like, that doesn't feel strange to go out for lunch and eat lunch food. But Here's my struggle. Does. Like if I'm going to make, make a salad, then I'm like, oh, I should add a protein. But then I have to like bake a chicken breast. Yeah, exactly. That's so the, that's the issue. Yeah. That's why I eat a lot of eggs. I told you that today. <laughs> She's like, Isaac's bringing me a bunch of eggs for eggs, lunch. like, because I don't have to defrost a chicken <laughs> yeah. to eat it. You could buy, like, chicken strips at the store. That I are hate already. those. Mm -hmm. I'm so picky. If it has any of, like, that tendon in the, in the chicken tenders, I, like, want to bomb. Okay, so what you should do, what, like, Schnooks does, is they have rotisserie chicken already off their rotisserie. Yes, I do. And like you that. can just put that in your salad. Yeah. Then it's like an <laughs> You gotta watch the um, YouTube Rumble episode to see what Tara just did. If you don't, go subscribe. <laughs> okay, so that. you would get a chef and a breast reduction. I would get a breast lift and a new health. And a new health. <laughs> gotcha. Not just Actually, one bathroom. I really love my house, but there is a designer that I absolutely love. Her name is Amber Interiors, and I want her to design and build a new house for me. Is she, she the interior that Livy McLamon uses? Uh, no. But hers it's hers. similar. Oh, wait. I think hers is named April. Okay. Oh, it's my turn. Um, okay. What is something that everyone looks stupid doing? <laughs> Wearing Crocs. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Episode over. I think everybody looks stupid making reels. <laughs> that is, yes. Yeah. Slash TikToks. TikToks. Um, I, yeah. I think that that's something that really does. How did we get, how did we get muscled into making reels? <laughs> like literally us as a society, we are literally shoved into being like, Hey, if you want your stuff seen, you need to make a reel. Yeah. I just don't know where like the dancing in front of camera became like, I, as a consumer don't really want to see no. my favorite influencer dance. No, I'm just not interested. I'm um, not a dancer. I don't care to see other people dance. Right. Dance. <laughs> dance. Do you think you can dance? <laughs> <laughs> Michael Flatley, Lord of the Dead. It's funny. Um, yeah, I feel I feel like it's a weird thing that like the only way you could go viral is if you're dancing and adding words and being like so <laughs> like, stupid. Why is that a thing? It's so disingenuous too. I also don't love. I like to be original. Like yeah. I like to have things that that I'm coming up with myself. So I don't love the whole like hopping on the trend and hitting like a trending sound. To me, like that's not original because all I'm doing is redoing what somebody else mm -hmm. made trendy and that's what I don't love so just all of it as a whole I don't love the concept no because I want my content I, I, I say that loosely because I don't have content I just mean like <laughs> I don't want to have to be it's the whole being put in the box yeah I don't I like don't, being put in the box I don't yeah I don't like that they have us in a box yeah. and they're telling us what to do I'm like don't tell me what to do yeah I know Instagram used to be like Whatever you wanted. You just shared your life and now it's lots of rules. Wow, that got deep real fast. It did. <laughs> Let's move on. Join us for more heavy topics. Yes, we've got like, lots of them. I think it's my this one's not that fun, but whatever. Uh what's the last show you binged? 
uh, Yellowstone. Peaky blinders. Mine was love is blind as of recently as this morning. <laughs> and, um, my husband went to high school, like not in the same class, but there was a girl from his high school that was on it. So I was like extra invested. I was like, I gotta find out what happens to her. Um, <clears throat> it's a great show. Well, I still haven't <laughs> finished Yellowstone because Brian got mad that I watched it ahead of him. So now that I'm was kidding. a little shady that you did. That. <laughs> in my defense, <laughs> here's my reasoning. I gave him three weeks, three weeks to catch up because I had caught up to like, he had watched ahead of me and then I caught up to those episodes and then I went ahead of him. So then I sat. Why don't you watch it together? Well, because I fell asleep. So then he had watched <laughs> like two episodes without me while I slept. Oh, okay. So it started so, with him. Yes. It started with him being a little shady. Yes. Okay. But then I gave him three weeks. I kept saying, watch Yellowstone, catch up, watch Yellowstone. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not, so I'm just so we actually have this rule before we start a new show, which it's like doesn't happen that much because we both don't watch a lot of TV. But if we are going to start a new show, we'll text each other and say, are you interested in watching fill in the blank? So like before I started Love is Blind, I was like, are you interested in the show? If not, I'll start it by myself. Because there has been times where Phil would be like, oh, I would have watched that with you. And I would have never guessed. So like, like, for example, before Love is Blind, I watched Cheer. <laughs> I was like, I don't think you're, like, it's just a respect thing. I'm like, I don't think you're going to be interested in Cheer, but just wanted to check. And of course he wasn't. But then he wanted to watch The Tinder Swindler with me, which is a new documentary. It's great. You guys should watch I, it. Somebody, I feel like, yeah, I feel like an influencer I follow was talking about Super it. funny. Okay. Um, Good to know. But yeah, okay, so we're going to end the episode. Is that all of our questions? Oh, Yes, because I asked you about what you were curious about. Yeah, we did three each. Oh, okay. three each. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote down five. That's why I was oh, okay. thinking yeah. I had more. Um, so the last segment of the episode is always going to be called Sisterhood Unders Understood. Yes. Which could be a combination of things where either we are going to tell a sister story about us or where we have pulled the audience and asked you guys questions um, to tell us stories and or funny things that have happened to you. Maybe you guys asking what our opinion would be on something mm -hmm. um, or uh, just question and answers. Yes. Right? We didn't have anything for this episode because it was the very first episode that we are filming. Yeah. So we're going to so go we ahead. weren't prepared. Yeah. Sorry. So we're going <laughs> to close it out. We didn't have anything. So, <laughs> so this section is we over. We could tell a <laughs> Thank you for story. <laughs> we could have just thrown one in there. Why didn't we just be like, it's fine. No, we didn't. I didn't know if you wanted to go on the fly or not. <laughs> Um, I think um, you should tell a story. You have plenty. Let's tell your dish story. Okay, I'll just tell this, even though it's so silly, because we just need something to fill in this segment. <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking earlier about whether or not we sat at the table for dinner, and we were trying to remember like which houses we lived in and if we were like having dinner together or not. <laughs> I remember the houses. <laughs> well, I was trying to say lived. like where we lived and if in that house and like that specific time we lived in the house if we all ate dinner together that was the context of the conversation and I was saying our dad <clears throat> would be at the table most of the time but the girls would always do the dishes so it'd always be like he would stack all the plates and he would be clearing the table and the three of us with our mom would do the dishes and because I was young I decided to pray that God would make me have to poop after <laughs> dinner each time so that I would get out of doing the dishes and it worked for years. Um, and I was just saying, the weird thing is that you guys never confronted me about it. <laughs> so I was always in the bathroom right after dinner, um, pretending or actually going to the restroom. And I always got up doing the dishes. <laughs> God answered your prayers. He so. did. It's kind of amazing that he was just like, you know what? Yeah, you don't have to do dishes tonight. <laughs> I was saying either that or it's my really horrible digestive system that was just aiding me in the problem. I'm so. Sure. Alrighty, well, that was our first official episode of Sisterhood Society. I was going to say Sisterhood Understood. <laughs> that was our first official episode of Sisterhood Society. If you guys have liked what you've heard today, or if you would like to join us in the future, we will be dropping an episode once a week, and we will have them out on all of the platforms where you can find the audio version, as well as we're going to have video version on Rumble and YouTube. And if you would be so kind to subscribe mm -hmm. and or leave us a review, download the comment, episode, share, we love you. <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, leave a comment on our Rumble, our YouTube video of um, 
what should we have them comment? An emoji or should we have them comment something? Um, you could have them answer what's something dumb of a big <laughs> what's something dumb. <laughs> what's something, <laughs> something dumb? <laughs> what's something that everyone looks stupid doing? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so on our YouTube video or Rebel, if you're watching the video, make sure to comment what's something everyone looks dumb doing. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching our very first episode or listening to our very first episode of Sisterhood Society. We love you and we will see you in the next one.